Hello, and welcome to this video on designing and editing GDS files. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the cell hierarchy structure. This is a really powerful feature of the GDS files that allows us to separate parts of our pattern into individual cells that we can then reference later on. We can create arrays of these references to make more complicated patterns much easier. Additionally, because things are divided into cells, we can go back and edit those cells later on and all the changes will propagate through our layout. This makes it much easier to manage the files as they get larger and to keep things nice and organized. To start, we're going to start with a basic K layout session here. I've created a single cell, cell 1, and a single layer here. And then in the center, I've just drawn two boxes. These are just two simple boxes. Uh, they're 5 microns wide and tall, and they're just both centered around 0, 0 here. Nothing special at this point, just creating these simple shapes. From here, I'm going to start creating new cells to start taking advantage of the cell hierarchy. On the left here, I'm going to right click and go down to new cell. This prompt is going to ask me for a device name, or excuse me, a cell name, which I've chosen device, and a window size, which we can just leave whatever. In this case, two microns is the default. Now, we've created a new cell. On the left hand side here, you can see device, the device cell has been created. Uh, I've just chosen device because I'm trying to think in terms of my nano uh, fabrication process and maybe I'm building an actual device here. The device cell is bold because that's what we're currently looking at. Cell 1 is no longer bold. In the middle here, we don't see anything. Because we're looking at the device cell and we haven't put anything in that cell yet, it's blank. What we're going to do is make a reference in this cell to cell 1. To make that reference, it's a, uh, the terminology for that would be an instance in K layout, so we're going to go ahead and click the instance button at the top of the window. In instance, it asks us what cell we want to reference. We're going to reference cell 1, and we're going to not change the scaling factor, the rotation, anything at this point. We just want to create a single instance of the cell. So I'll click OK. And now with my, when I move my mouse around, and if I zoom out a little bit, you can see I'm, it's kind of giving me an outline of the contents of cell 1. So at this point, I can go ahead and place this somewhere doesn't matter too much where I'm placing it, I can always move it around later. And now I still have the ability to place another instance, so I can go ahead and place another one nearby. At this point I'm going to push escape to go back to select mode, and I'm going to uh, double click on one of these cells. And you can see it tells me the width and height of the cell and where I place it. I managed to place it right at 0, 0. Click on the other one, it tells me I'm at 15, 0. But right now we're just seeing the outline of the cell, we can't actually see its contents. And that's because we're looking at a certain level in the cell hierarchy. If we want to change to see different levels, we can go down to the bottom left-hand side here. I'll move out of the way. And you can see this um, number here. If I increase this number, it shows me more um, levels of the cell hierarchy. And now we can actually see the boxes that we drew earlier. Another way to go through this, um, the levels of the cell hierarchy, if we go to display at the top, it shows us the shortcut keys for the hierarchy. So we've got showing the full hierarchy and incrementing the hierarchy is plus and minus on this uh, particular setup. So if I push the minus keys, I go down the hierarchy. And if I push plus, I'm going up the hierarchy so I can see more and more of my uh, cells and then the features inside those cells. Great, so now we can see how we've made two copies, two references to the cell uh, one cell that we created earlier. On the left hand side you'll see that cell one is no longer immediately visible. Instead we have this arrow next to device. I'm going to go ahead and click that arrow and it expands the tree here, the actual hierarchy, and I can see cell one is kind of tabbed in from device. That's because cell one is referenced inside of device now. So it's kind of showing you this tree, where things are relative to each other. So these two uh, instances are great, but let's say I want to make a whole bunch of them at, in an array. That can actually be done very easily. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to this view where I can see cell, the two cell ones. I'm going to select one of them, and I'm going to hit delete to remove it. Now I'm going to go back to the other one that I have and double click. That opens up its properties. And when we were creating the instance, we didn't do anything with the rotation or the scaling factor or the array checkbox here. I'm going to go ahead and click array instance now. This lets me create an array of these patterns. So I'm going to make uh, five rows and five columns with a spacing of 20, 20. So this is letting you control the X and Y 
uh, vectors of the rows and the x and y vectors of the columns. By setting up in this mode, I'm making them orthogonal. I want them to be at 90 degrees to each other. There's no kind of angles or anything like that. We will get into some of those uh, more complicated non-orthogonal uh, vectors in a moment. So let's go ahead and click OK and zoom out. And we can see, indeed, we have a 5 by 5 array. I'm going to hit plus to show the contents. And now you can see those 25 instances of those smaller cells, the cell with the two boxes in it. Great, OK, so now let's see what happens if we go back to cell 1. So to go back to a different cell, I'm going to move over to the left, right click on it, and do Show as New Top. The top cell is the one that you're currently looking at. So by changing this to the new top, this is the one that we're currently looking at. And we've been brought back to our view of the just single two boxes from cell 1. I'm going to go ahead and click on one of these boxes, and I'm going to change its dimensions. I'm going to make it 10. 10, and I'm going to change the center as well so it stays, uh, the corners still match up with the previous one. So now we have one smaller box, the original size, and one that's kind of two times larger. And now I'm going to jump back to the device cell to see what's happened there. So right clicking on it and show as new top, and I'm brought back to the device cell where we have the 25 instances of cell 1, and you can see that all of these instances have changed. They are now all showing this kind of lopsided smaller box and larger box uh, next to it. Which is great. So what this means is that when we make a change to cell 1, that change propagates to all the other uh, instances of that cell. So it makes it very easy. If I decide later on I need to make a small change to my pattern, it can easily be propagated through uh, to the other cells. And we can go further. If we create a new cell here, I'm going to call this one chip. And again, in this chip cell, I can make an instance. I can reference uh, the device cell. And here we won't create any arrays. We're just going to make one instance. And again, it shows you the outline, so you kind of know what you're getting. And I can create a couple copies of this. And again, I'll push plus to go through the hierarchy. And you can see all of those cells here. I can make reference to multiple cells. I could reference cell 1 here as well. So we'll go ahead and do that. OK. And I can just place copies of cell 1 here as well. So there, there's a lot of room to, to play around here. You can, they don't have to stay in the same level of the hierarchy. You can reference cells at different levels of the hierarchy. Additionally, I can draw shapes in any of these cells. So let's go back to device. Actually, before I do that, if I expand the tree, you can see that cell 1 is being referenced both in device and in chip here. That's why we have the two references to cell 1. Let's go back to device. So right click, show as new top. I can draw things here. If I just add a new box over on the side here, and we go back to chip, you can see those new boxes got added to the right of those device cells. So yeah, this really shows you that you can add shapes or cells in whatever cell you want, and they will be referenced and propagated through properly. And again, to change what we're viewing at, we just click the minus key. So that shows you what's at a particular level. In this level, uh, level 2, if I move over here, you can see we're at level 2. I have um, a view of just cell 1s that are referenced in device, the shapes that I drew in device, and the references to cell 1. Great. So let's see um, some other things that we could do with this. I'm going to go ahead and create a new cell. Call this one um, sample. I'm going to make a couple instances here to cell 1. Um, I'm going to create an array, 3 by 3 array, with 20 by 20 again. Let's zoom out. Okay, so uh, what I want to look at now is what if I don't want all of these shapes to be here? What if I want to create kind of a checkerboard of these uh, cell 1 instances? What if I want kind of an X? I want the top left, the top right, the middle, the bottom left, and the bottom right. I could go through and create a lot of different arrays. I could create one array where I've got one cell here and one cell here, then another instance of this cell here, and then another two cells at the bottom to kind of create that checkerboard uh, pattern. But that's a lot of instances, a lot of typing and things like that that seems more complicated than I want. What if I could go in and just create this 3x3 array and then delete 
these four cells here, the one at the top, left, bottom, and right. Well, if I try that, if I try and select it and delete, I'm just going to delete all of them. You'll notice when I click any of these, this little plus appears in all of them. This is showing me that when I'm selecting, I'm selecting the whole array of cells. I'm not selecting an individual one because this instance was created in an array. If we double click, we'll see it's an array at the bottom, a three by three array. Selecting any one of the cell ones selects the entire array of cell ones, which could be useful or could be not useful depending on the situation. In this case, it'd be nice to select each one individually. So there's a way we can get around that. If we select the entire array, and I go to Edit, Selection, I can resolve the array. This means that it's going to create an individual instance for each item in the array. So let's click that. Seemingly nothing has changed now, but I'm going to click away to unselect everything. And now when I move my mouse over any of the cells, you can see that this black uh, plus sign only appears uh, in the cell that I'm hovering over. This means I can select that individual cell and I can double click and you can see it's no longer arrayed. It's just changed as X and Y coordinates based on the previous array that we had. So at this point with this particular cell one selected, I can go ahead and click the delete key to remove it. I'm going to go through and actually I'm going to do shift and select the three others that I don't want and click delete to remove them. So in this way, we were able to create one array of all nine of these cells and then go through, or then select them all and resolve the array to create nine individual instances, which we could then select and delete as we wanted to. This makes it a lot easier to create uh, kind of partially filled arrays and uh, things like that with your cells. Uh, the other thing I'm going to cover here is how to make kind of some more interesting arrays. What if we don't want uh, a square array, an orthogonal array that I was mentioning earlier. We want something uh, with a different lattice constant. Maybe you want to make an hex a hexagonal array of uh, cells. So let's go and again create a new cell here. And so I'm going to call this sub hex. I'm going to make two cells in order to make this hexagonal array. The first one I'm going to instance uh, the cell one again. Let's just keep using that. I want to create an array of the cells, but I only I want two rows and one column. I'm going to get rid of my column vector here because I'm not using any columns, I'm just using rows. I'm going to make my x distance 10. And uh, so for a hexagonal array, we want things to be in an equilateral triangle. So I want kind of one cell at one corner and another cell at this other corner. And then I can array all of those to make a the full hexagonal array. So if you know the geometry of these kind of equilateral triangles, if I have my x distance is um, half of my uh, hypotenuse, then this third distance here needs to be half times or the square root of 3. I'm kind of pulling those numbers out of my hat, uh, but you can go and draw it out and, and check the geometry for yourself, and you'll see that the results are going to work here. And also it's important to know that these... Um, a lot of these fields inside of these uh, properties will accept basic mathematical functions of so plus, minus, multiply, divide, and even things like square root. Let's go ahead and click this here. So this is my subcell. Doesn't look like much at this point, but let's go ahead, whoops, and create another cell. Like that. And this cell I'm going to call full hex. And in this one, I'm going to create yet another instance, and I'm going to select subhex. And here we're going to create an orthogonal array. So let's make it 10 by 10. And in here, we're going to go the square root of 3 times 20. And in the x, we're going to go 20. Now if I zoom out, Oops. Here to that, you can see I've got an hexagonal array. I picked a terrible cell to see this, to visualize this. Let's go ahead and go back to cell one real quick and make a modification of that cell to hopefully make it a little easier to see. Let's just go ahead and delete this larger box. And we'll go back to full hex. And that change is propagated through that removal of the larger box. And now uh, I only have the smaller box remaining, and you can see that nice hexagonal shape there. 
So you can kind of play with those those things, those uh, array vectors, make them non-orthogonal. And here I kind of used the trick of using a non-orthogonal with an orthogonal to make it very easy to create this hexagonal array. So definitely something to play around with, play around with all of the different instances you can do here. Uh, with all of these things, we were able to create a lot of interesting geometry with the cell hierarchy structure. So it's a very powerful feature of the GDS file structure.